Welcome to Who's Up Podcast, where we talk about sports, health, and wellness, fi- excuse me, personal finance, and um, some current events. This is part two of our series this week, where we're going to talk a little bit about Memorial Day and the upcoming cookout season, because, you know, you know, more day brings cookout season, and of course, getting warm outside, so you know what's coming around, sundress season. <laughs> so... Um, we got Danny Ocean today. We got Justin. We got Dr. J. So, Doc, what do you have for like our to help be more healthy with this cookout season? Because I know a lot of people just barbecue and it's a bunch of meat and drinking alcohol and sitting in the sun all day, as it should be. Yes, so yes, so it's some good stuff. I guess what we got to do is just plan for what we're going to do. You know, make it make an account for it and upgrade what we can, upgrade what we can't, right? So if we know we're going to drink this weekend, maybe during the weekday leading up to it, we're getting in plenty of water, right? And then on the back end, we rehydrate. We'll get the alcohol a couple quick, right? So that should, that should get us all right. And then, you know, say through the day, other drinking, especially if it's hot outside, sneak a little water in along with it. That'll help. You know, it might bring the buzz down a little bit, but it's a marathon, not a sprint, right? So we'll look at it like that. Um, and then say, you know, as far as the menu goes, you know, our hot dogs and hamburgers and whatnot like that, we just got to read our label as best we can. You know, certain hot dogs will have less nitrates and fillers and artificial ingredients. So we're going to lean to the ones if we can't help it. They don't have those things. In it. Um, I won't get brand specific, but just try to read, you know, pick it up and look. So uh, no nitrates would be the best ones, you know, um, fillers. We're looking out there to avoid those type of things. Um, and, you know, say, for example, when we get our, our menu set up, and we include some other things that we really don't think about all the time, so maybe some, some different vegetable options, right? So um, as we go on through here, we can talk about the recipes along the way. Um, but just to backtrack, I believe we got a question from Justin about nitrates. Is that right, Justin? Okay, so nitrates are basically preservatives, um, and they're going to try to help extend the shelf life. Or the, or, the, or the hot dog or whatever it is that we eat. They're not just in hot dogs, but um, if you look on certain brands, they won't have nitrates in it. They may have celery extract or celery juice as a, as a preservative. So that kind of, not to give them a soapbox, but it gets to the point of certain things that, you know, like talking about organics and inorganic and all that type of like fertilizers and all that type of stuff. You can see that certain things, you won't notice a difference in the taste. And it might make you think why they're adding all this stuff in. And other things, you notice that there, there is a distinct difference in the flavor. So then we can kind of go in that direction. You know? um, I guess before I go too much further along, I want to open it up, though. We got any other questions about, say, the meat process of the order alcohol before we go to down the vegetable pathway? I do. Um, as, a, as a person who is a fan of making my own like burger patties, like, I don't like buying the frozen stuff because there, there's so much process mm-hmm. and stuff in it. Um, and there's usually not a big price difference, right? Like if you like a, a frozen pack of eight burgers is probably the same price as a pound of, of ground beef. Um, are there any other ways? Mm-hmm. That, like other, um, God, I had the question and the question is now gone. Uh, processed burgers and uh, hot dogs, like are there more? Like healthier options of, of them? Or? I, mean, I mean, there's no healthier. You can't make your own hot dog. So you can Right, right. Well, yeah, you can, you know, some people, they make their sauces, they make, they, they got the, the means to do it, you know, if you want, but now you take up that time and convenience. That's what you're paying for. Right. So, like, to, I guess, go back to your point, you got, like, the fresh ground stuff, you make it yourself. Then you got a chance to control how much sodium going in there, how much seasoning going in there is at. And these are going to taste better, too. You know, so, um, not to steal a recipe from, from the homie, but the Drake Burger is what we call it. It's the best you ever had. I got shot up to Chardo. So, you know, you take your seasoning, I'm not going to tell all the secrets, but you season it how you want it. You want to put cheese in there, you can, but you mix it all together. And bam, and when you put that hand to it, you put love in there too. That, that, you can taste that in the feet. Matt, you know, you, you know you're sitting there. But, um, you know, you can put your onions and your pepper on the inside of the burger patty too, and all that stuff will taste better. And then a lot of the seasoning we're using is actually good for us. We just don't realize it. And it can pack with antioxidants and fiber and all types of stuff. Um, we got some more questions. I think you had a question, Dustin. Yeah, I got yeah. one. Uh, so if we're going to be drinking, what kind of, are there meats that are better 
to maybe absorb the your the liquor, mm. the, you know, mm. the beer. Like, are you saying that are there certain foods that you say like, all right, if you really gonna be drinking for real, for real, eat a heartier burger or you know what I mean? Like, what kind of foods were kind of I guess slow down the, the alcohol to your system? You know, we sat back to bread, so they helped so because we had the buns and that type of stuff. But you definitely want to have something on your stomach. Um, and then your, your fruit's going to be a good friend, too, because they're going to help with the hydration. Mm -hmm. Keep definitely throwing you off. So that's something that's good you can add to the menu that a lot of times you don't see, but a, a good fruit salad or, you know, even just a whole, like a bowl of apples, a bowl of oranges, and stuff like that. Because now we're going to have to buy electrolytes in, too. And um, that's why I mentioned the water. Um, you know, water got a very important part of our, our body as it is because it's part of our blood volume. It's going to make up our, our muscle content. So if you think about people that catch cramps in the summertime because they sweat and get too hot, you know, lack of water can be a, be a factor. Um, and I guess to, to get with the meats, you know, if, if, if we can avoid some of the heavier porks or stuff with a lot of salt, mm -hmm. that, that'll that help us out too because, um, you know, we're thinking about blood pressures and all that and, and that kind of stuff mixing together. People might be taking medicine, that kind of stuff. So, we want to kind of find you a good blend. So say maybe we lean towards <clears throat> maybe like the turkey sausages or the chicken sausages or something like that they have on the menu. Um, you know, I haven't tried too many of the Beyond Meats, but I hear they taste really good. You know, so that's something you can mix in. You know, I know people are going to have it for, but like I said, if we can get it where we're not letting that be like the main, main thing, that way we don't hurt ourselves too much. You know, maybe we get enough just to taste it, you know, a rib or two instead of maybe the whole slab. Just to make it um, um, I got another one. Um, so I know TJ is a really big fan of the chicken dogs. Is there a chicken dog brand that you, <clears throat> that you could recommend? <laughs> you would chicken dog brands? Um, let me see if I can find a brand. Not one in this house. Not no chicken. I know. Um, hundred <laughs> percent beef. You know, oh no, but a chicken dog slap though. Like chicken Wait. dogs are really good. No, seriously. Like I, I eat chicken dogs. Like they slap. Chicken dogs are good. Like chicken dogs or chicken sausages. I had a chicken sausage. That's all right, but not no chicken dog. Oh, damn, chicken, yeah. chicken, chicken dog. No, I've had a chicken hot dog. It's good. Now the yeah, thing about bread, you know. Yeah, but, but the thing about chicken hot dogs is like you got to buy a high quality one. That's the thing. Say, yeah. All right. No, yeah. turkey dogs, dogs they good too. Well, like, I never had a turkey dog. Turkey dogs, all right. I like the Oscar Mayer ones better than the ball parts, but they all right. And, you know, Nathan, they still hold weight, but like if you say uncured and you know, mentally processed, all oh, that's 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 the way you're looking for. Because you know, you got all the sausages, it's the same way. You know, then down the ocean, I've been smoking and grilling, so you got you know, uh, the whole turkey we smoking now, we smoking deer meat, you know, we can switch it up and get bison meat, all kind of different things, you know, just. Make some variety out of it. Or, or even there, we go to the, get some fish, switch it up a little bit. You know, we got these fish fries going over the summertime, but we can switch up our variety of fish. We can get bluegill, we can get bass, perch. You know, it's, we can do more than just the same white and haddock all the time. Yeah, man, who, who tried to do a fish fry? I ain't been to a fish fry in years. I'm down for it. Oh, come on, Ooh, come on. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, come on, some Fred Jeff. Some good cornbread. Cornbread. Hot puppy. Come on, yeah. Let's say cornbread. Woo, that's a heavy meal. Cornbread, he'll kill you. They go together. But say, okay, now we gotta use a corn and cob on our side, right? So we can wrap that on the grill, throw them out there. Or one that I made a couple couple cookers ago and did again for the Super Bowl this past time. Get like some zucchini squash, yellow squash. And you got like your um different color peppers, right? The red, orange, and, and green. And you can leave them kind of bigger chunks. So you can cut them up fine if you want to, but throw them in there too. And then one time I used bacon, that was for the crowd. If I know they want, they want it. But the other times I use like smoked turkey nets or um, well, you just leave my meat out of it all together, just put in some olive oil or something like that. We put all that in there, season them down really good, basil, oregano, peppers, and whatever, secret sauces, ingredients, seal them up tight. Let the charcoal talk to it, or let, or let propane talk to it, excuse me, can't hang it. Taste the meat, not the heat, but all that type of stuff go on. And when it's done, oh, man, mm, wham, it hit you right in your mouth. It'd be so good. And, and then, then you're getting fiber. Asparagus, yeah, asparagus is a good one in there, too. I haven't tried that perfectly, but I heard that's a good one. Yeah, I know. Especially you taking it, wrapping that bacon. 
Yeah, no, no that good idea. The point. <laughs> um, like me making burgers, back to what Dan Ocean saying about making his own burgers. I usually take like a pound of like lean turkey meat, like turkey ground turkey, then a high fat content mm-hmm. of beef, ground beef, and mix them together. And most people don't even know that they're not eating straight beef. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa, That sounds like a violation. It, hey. it, it sure does. It it's sound good, that's some that sound like but I'd good. be kind of I'd be kind of pissed out. You be serving me half beef, half they cook at two different temperatures. Like turkey has to be like one. What 170, 165? Beef, that's well done. It is. You made me one of them burgers, TJ. A, a true non well done burgers in these streets, T. That's how good it tastes. You ain't even know it. I have a feeling it does not taste good at all. Beef at 165 degrees, anything is not good. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but you know what? I'll try it. Like, I trust you. I trust your skills. If you say it's good, I really lean to like 98.2. Mix it. You can do the same thing like you do, like making meatloaf, just mixing together. You know what I'm saying? Just so you're not eating so much fat and, you know, dark mm-hmm. red meat all the time. So and another thing, my, mom, my mom put me on a disc. Like when you go to cook all and stuff, she'll be like, get your size first, then get like your um your meats and stuff. Because like most times your size will be like your, you know, your mixed vegetables or greens and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Cause like most people get pile like you know get hamburgers, hot dogs, and also they ain't got no room for the size, so you leave right. all the healthy stuff still at the table just because you don't have any room on your plate. So if you flip it around and start the other way, you end up your intake will be a little bit better with the the, the vegetables. But so your mother disrupts the whole rhythm of the line by starting at the right end instead of the left. Cause you usually walk left to right, so she get her plate, cut the line, walk all the <laughs> way to the end, and walk in reverse. Oh no! See, that's the thing. See, oh, your mom was a menace. Yeah, that's that's some. Nah, she, she, she a thing. killer too. That's some killer stuff. Uh, this, this is where you messed up at. My mom gonna set the table up the other way around. So oh, so she, she in charge. So she she light years ahead of me. Okay, yeah. my bad, my bad. Yeah. I didn't mean be disrespectful. Like, Please don't hurt me. All that stuff until you get to the end of the table. Because my yeah. mom, no, you know, she, she looking up for everybody. Okay, okay. I got it. Question for anybody. This one's for anybody. Do y'all have a good recipe, like one one good recipe where you say, all right, I'm going to put my money on this. And if I tell people I know how to cook, this is the one recipe. Do y'all got, I, don't, I know I personally, I don't be cooking like that for real, for real. But I got, but I figured y'all would. So is there one recipe that you would like to, you know, tell our viewers about? Oh, I got three of them. I make the best ribs, chicken and chicken wings on the planet. Come holler at me. I'll smoke a whole day. We get we lick. I'll uh, smoke a chicken for all of us. Y'all say the word. Okay. So which one? So give give one recipe. I guess for your chicken wings. Let's do let's do chicken wings. I would kind of give us a little start to finish almost. So first, the most important part about chicken wings are the type of wings. I buy organic wings because I I have tasted the difference between the organic wings and then just the big steroid wings that you get frozen or from, you know, a supermarket that aren't organic. Like the, the taste, the wings might be a little smaller, but you can, the, the taste is. And then for, for seasoning, we got salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, um, a little chili powder, a little red pepper flakes. And then if you're really feeling froggy, you might throw some cumin in there. I usually don't. That's again, that's if you're feeling froggy, set the Weber up for, for, I have this thing called a vortex. It turns your grill into a hot air fryer, essentially. Uh, it burns like six, 700 degrees. Put them on the grill, seven minutes, flip them, seven, take them off, sauce them, put them back for five, so the sauce is set. Okay, when you say sauce, what kind of sauce are you putting on there? It depends. Like sometimes it's barbecue sauce. Sometimes like uh, Lidl, low key, Lidl has some a great sauce. Like they have like a, a great sauce profile. Like they have a Nashville one that I enjoy using. It's 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 spicy. Hey, fuck you. Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah. It's like it's like a it's like a vinegar based mm-hmm. sauce, like a Nashville sauce. Yeah, man. Like that stuff. On man. a burger too. Oh, I've never put on burger. Like I just put them man. there. Okay. Man, did did yesterday turkey burger on both sides. Okay. Yeah, Lidl. Lidl low key got some of the best sauce in the game. Yeah, man. Okay. What about you, Doc J? What you got? Oh, just to piggyback off of what Danny Ocean was saying on his recipe, he mentioned he uses paprika. 
just want to touch on that for a second, that it's good for your vision. It's good for reducing inflammation because it has capsaicin in it. It's also good to reduce your cholesterol because the capsaicin and all that type of stuff is good to help clear out your circulation. Um, it's got some antioxidants and it helps with keeping blood sugar spiking up and down. Cumin does a lot of the same stuff. And also it's good for uh, I mean, reducing inflammation too. So when I'm getting to your recipes, they can be medicine, not just flavor. Um, to give you a recipe that I like to use, I, I go with, oh man, I don't want to make trade secrets. So maybe we'll go with a little cabbage. Red and green mixed together. And put the smoke next in there with them. That much venom. I mean, just enough to let them know what's in there. Touch of olive oil, red flakes, a little salt and pepper. And some oregano and basil. Let them do their thing. You put this whole pot around the grill, or you make that the night before and just reheat it when it's time for the cookout. Either way. Okay. TJ? Man. We already know you mixing uh, ground beef and tricking people with turkey in there. Other than that, uh, concoction, what what else you got? That still don't sit right. <laughs> all right, all right. Just wait. Just wait for you one day. But um, I'll, if we stand on this grilling theme, uh, I'm going with these lamb chops, man. I love making these lamb chops. Uh, you just can't say lamb chops and then just leave it at that. Like, go on. All yeah, right. Well, me. it's not much to make lamb chops, man. All right. So go and turn your smoker on, right? Yeah. To me, I, I let my lamb chops cook smoke for about four hours because it got a bone in it. It's a little right. long, but you know, that real low, he's only like maybe 200, 225. Okay. And, but I, I run with salt, pepper, garlic. Um, what's that stuff? Uh, oregano. And um, I try to get the, uh, I know it's not the healthiest one, but it's the uh, McCormick's Grill Mates. Throw some of that on there. And then just for like, cause lamb is, has a real, like it's not really fatty. So I take some butter and I spray across the top. And then I set them on the rack bone down, you know, that, and I just let them sit. And then like, um, probably like air out, I'll turn it around. So like if the bone was facing outside the grill, put it towards the inside of the grill and just let that sit. And when they come off, like butter. But I forgive you for your beef and turkey now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Justin. That, what you got, Justin? Oh, I told you, I don't be, I don't be cooking like that, but I, I Nothing. make chicken breast. So <laughs> I put, you know what I mean? I make a, make a little burger, put some, uh, my boy Lamar put me onto that tahine. So you oh, put what's a that? Tahine. It's like, it's almost like a little, uh, I don't, don't want to say it's, it's like a Spanish season. Mm -hmm. And they got a couple different things in there. Honestly, I don't know. It just looked pretty in the bottle. So I don't I don't crush the burger on it. You know what I mean? I tap a little bit, let, let y'all know it's there. I normally put like uh, garlic, salt and pepper. Um, I do put a little of that grill mate seasoning on there. Um And then I, I'm a little impatient. So that's something that I'm working on in the grill. So sometimes if... They don't be cooking all the way, so I'll be having to put them back on there. So that's why I won't try to give y'all no, no recipe or nothing, because I ain't trying to kill them. Hey, 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 ain't nothing wrong with eating a little red meat. Yeah, okay, well, if that's all the case, All things in some moderation, you go. So yeah. I'm scared to ask this question. Do y'all be eating steaks well done? Yeah. No. No. I my steaks medium. No. I don't like red. I don't like I don't medium. Like red. Yo, so, yeah. so you just like eating rubber. But I don't be cooking. I don't. It depends on how you cook, though, because, like, you can be well done. Like, you might not cook on a grill well done, and it might not taste like rubber, but if you yeah. just let a steak, like, bake in the oven, it might be well done. It's like a slow roast. You know what I'm saying? It's going to come out tender. Was, slow roast. Yeah, no. it does cook it really slow, but, like, it, to be well done and still be all right. But Y'all cook, cook it on the pan? Like, if you call, like, fast grill, like, on the grill, on the pan, yeah. yes, it's going to come out like rubber if you, like, because such high heat. Yeah. But... Oh, than that, if you just like slow cook it, like so, cook it like a chuck roast is what you're telling me. That or like like in the oven, or just eating like, man, have you ever tried uh, some steaks in a in a uh, crock pot? That's what I say crock pot, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, get a couple not, like get a, get a couple fillets, right? You know, season them up, butter them up, put a little um uh bone broth in there. Okay. 
let them jokers soak and let them cook. And then after they're done, after they're done cooking for a couple hours, then, then you put, it's called re- reverse searing. Then put them in the oh, pan. yeah, reverse searing is where yeah. it's at. Then put them in the pan and you get that crust with some butter and some olive oil. You get that crust, but they, it'd be well done. But them things be the tenderest things. See, I need to, yeah, we're going to need to talk some more because I need to, uh, my game, you talking about reversing and all that. Would you put the car, put a stake on the on the roof of the car and back up? Like, what you doing? <laughs> no, nah, reversing is just when you cook it first and mm-hmm. then you put in like a hot pan or something to get a crust. So oh, like, kind of your first, well, like they'll put it in a hot pan and sear it, like to, what it's called, seal the juices in and then mm-hmm. put it in the oven to finish cooking. So oh, okay. First is doing the exact opposite. When you like slow cook stuff, you still want that bark or crust on it. Okay. Don't forget to okay. let your meat rest for 10 minutes. Your yeah, that's true. Do not cut it right away. Cut it right yeah. Away. Why? Because <clears throat> all that... your juices and flavor will leak out as if you cut it right mm-hmm. away. Uh, okay. Okay. Then let your beef come up to room temperature before cooking it too. Mm-hmm. Don't take a cold steak and put it on the grill. It scares the meat. It shocks it. It gets tough. Ooh. Speaking of scaring the meat, that's what the deer hunters tell me. You should not shoot the deer while it's running. You're supposed to shoot him while he's standing still. Really? Yeah, the way the adrenaline don't get in the meat, taste nasty. Damn. Even I watched this one, um, this bison farmer. He was talking about it. When he take his bison to to the um, to the slaughter, you know, to the slaughter. They do it first thing in the morning when they feel calm and they don't care about too much. They just ease them on in. We, we want some steak do. recipes to shoot and yeah. But no, nah, Doctor J got a point though, because I, I read that too. That um, it's like those feelings get in the meat like so like those i guess they're different type of drilling and stuff actually mm-hmm. get in the meat. Cause they same with like chicken and when they lay eggs and stuff and they said those chemicals when they get in the you can actually have you feeling down and you know have more psychological issues as well that makes sense went from talking about steak to shooting bambi dang y'all cold All right. well we can leave bambi alone we can get we can get some bison steak y'all ever had hey. bison before mm-mm I had to buy some burger and it's great. That's only truth, man. Like, so you can you can do this. This is a good recipe for the ribeye. And if you like the um, you said buy some burger, Matt. I mean, Daniel, you said buy some burger. That's 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 a good one too. So like, if you take that that ribeye, you let it marinate in mango juice or pineapple juice overnight, a little bit of vinegar and whatever season you want. Then take them out the refrigerator so you don't scare the meat, like you were saying. Four minutes, maybe five on each side, because bison will cook a little faster than regular steak. And then that vinegar and the acid of the juice gonna cook it a little bit overnight anyway. You might, you might just take the fork and look at it and start to fall apart. I'm trying to say good stuff. Well, that sounds very good. Well, I hope all y'all enjoyed this week. Hope y'all got some good ideas to go try on the grill this weekend. Cause I know I'm gonna be on the grill this weekend. It's Memorial Day coming up. I definitely be out there cooking something up. So anyways, please like and subscribe. Please follow us on Instagram. And also, if you have any questions or you want to hear about any topics, please email us at 1-800-WHO'S-UP at gmail.com. Thank you and look forward to seeing y'all again. We out.